I was uh, I was really happy to know um, that a lot of people who I'm very close with were uh, were safe uh, in the immediate aftermath of that attack. I was able to go just to Facebook and to Twitter and to find out like that 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 these people that I care about are, are fine. Um, I'm very I'm very pleased to uh, to know that. So that uh, that will do it for for him for for that attack um life goes on um yeah wanted to talk very very briefly about that uh awful shooting that happened down south in um in a, a waffle house in uh tennessee um of course uh the this was this one was uh was newsworthy was interesting um due to the uh to the young man uh james shaw jr who uh, pried the rifle from the gunman and uh, and stopped it from being a much more deadly attack? I didn't talk about this one on the show prior to now, just simply because it's it's one of, it's a one in another line of uh, of awful gun related deaths, AR fifteen related deaths in the United States, um, ongoing uh, ongoing problems with guns south of the border. Um, so uh, I did want to bring this up just simply because. Uh, uh, on a on a serious note, James Shaw Jr. has launched a fundraiser. Um, by Thursday afternoon, uh, on GoFundMe, he had raked in one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars for the victims of that attack, which is just just phenomenal news. Um, really, really great work. But here's the thing that I wanted to bring this up because I didn't bring it up because I didn't think it was all that newsworthy of an attack, which is an awful thing to say. Uh, a gun attack, a gun attack um, at just a, a Waffle House should be. Um, should be a major, major event. It should be something that everyone is talking about and should be something that we remember every single moment of every single day. Um, but of course there's just like such a, I'm sure that, I'm sure that there's been another major deadly gun related attack since that one that wasn't even covered nationally, um, uh, wasn't covered internationally, obviously, since I don't know about it, you know, like it, it's, it's one of those things, but I, I didn't cover this one on the show because, you know, it wasn't, uh, it, it just wasn't something that I felt was necessary to cover. I feel like, you know, if, if it's covered substantially outside of this, if I don't have an interesting take on it, I'm not going to bring it up. Um, here's what I'm going to say. How is it that, uh, the fact that the guy wasn't wearing any pants, not, the thing that we led with i mean holy shit (laughs) like how is it that a a nude gunman isn't the isn't the first thing that is said on an article about this like i mean it's it's a it's a thing of like there's two things that sell and that's murder and sex and this had both um i don't mean to make light of the situation but it's just like how was how is it that i'm learning about this like so much farther away from this awful 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 don't get me wrong this awful event the the dude was not wearing pants which is just a a whole new level of weird um of course uh there's a lot being said about uh who this person um was and who this person is again i'm not going to use the gunman's name because there's enough uh, enough instances of that the guy is uh infamous enough his name is out there enough um a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out there uh saying that you know he was uh, he was severely mentally ill which i think of course you have to be in order to uh in order to do one of these awful attacks but um yeah no pants very very strange um of course a lot of, like i was saying a lot of people saying that he was severely mentally ill he should never should have had a gun blah 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 so you are saying that there should be limits on who gets a gun. Interesting that. Um, okay. Not going to do a full-on inter- interlude here musically. I'm just going to sort of allow some music to sort of play in the background so you know that we're sort of separating these two topics because I don't want these two topics to be considered the same topic because they're not, but I do want it to be in the same section of the show because, um, frankly, I'm lazy in terms of editing and... Um, I mean, if that wasn't obvious by now, I don't know what uh, really is. Um, professional wrestling. That's right. Your favorite section of the show. I know you love it. You get through the you get through the the vegetables of the uh, 
of, of the rest of the show to get to the real dessert, which is me rambling on about pro wrestling. It's what you love. It's what you crave. It's what you absolutely desire. You missed it last week, and I know that you did. It's back this week. It's okay. Everything is all right. We're talking about professional wrestling again. Of course, this week... Um, this past, I guess, Friday um, was the uh, the greatest Royal Rumble um, over in Saudi Arabia. Um, I didn't really talk about my thoughts on this show. Um, honestly, I wasn't I wasn't that interested in it. To be perfectly frank with you, I wasn't that uh, wasn't that keen on it going into the show i watched it i thought it was okay it's one of those things where it's like a royal rumble match that doesn't really mean anything Braun Strowman won it which is you know interesting and there goes a piece of metal again and highly 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 professional show here that you've got at the john dulong show i hope that you appreciate the level of professionalism that i bring to this uh, to this hobby of mine <laughs> so uh you know the, uh, the I think the most interesting thing that came out of this show is that uh, the uh, the WWE Universal Championship it was kind of like assumed that uh, that Brock Lesnar was going to lose to Roman Reigns in front of a crowd that uh, is much more interested in keeping kayfabe. Um, you know, the Middle East in general is a little bit more interested in uh, in engaging in professional wrestling on a more strict like who are the bad guys, who are the good guys sort of way. Um, same sort of thing happens uh, in India as well, but certainly you know Saudi Arabia, India. Um, um, and a few other a few other nations uh, are much more intrigued by who who's the baddie, who's the goody, um, and uh, we you know it's kind of the assumption that the reason that Brock Lesnar won at Mania uh, was that Roman Reigns would win the uh, the title in front of a much more receptive crowd. You weren't going to have people booing the uh, the victory, the big uh, the big coronation moment for Roman Reigns. But uh, in a weird, strange turn of events, Roman Reigns, it was a cage match. So the idea of a cage match, you can either win it like a traditional match with a pinfall or a submission, or you can win it by uh, escaping the cage. Um, Roman Reigns spears Brock Lesnar through the cage. Brock Lesnar is declaimed declared to be the winner uh as he hit the floor first um just interesting that they decided to go in this uh in this direction um i don't know what this means um for uh for the wwe going forward for how they're booking uh booking raw going forward um i don't know i'm kind of over Brock Lesnar as uh, as the Universal Champion. I kind of like. I'm not a huge, huge, huge uh, Roman Reigns fan, but um, I think that um, there's something to be said about uh, having the champion on television week week to week. Um, so I'd be kind of uh, kind of be happier if uh, if Brock Lesnar would uh, would lose the strap to somebody. If it's not Roman Reigns, then you know somebody else, and just uh, and just have the actual championship be on television on a week to week basis. Um, that, that's really all that I wanted to talk about, about the show itself. Um, what I do want to say is, is that I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with, uh, the WWE partnering with the kingdom of, uh, Saudi Arabia for these sorts of shows. Um, giving them a, uh, a show is one thing, making it become like a major pay-per-view event. Um, with the, title of the greatest Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is a thing that you do before WrestleMania. I'm sorry, it just is. Like, they could have just called it, like, a Royal Rumble style match, and I would have been happier, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with it becoming a major... A major event on the uh, WWE calendar. I don't know if they're planning on doing more of these in the future. Uh, I just... I, I don't know. Like, to me, though, like, for a company that's been so interested in... Um, in promoting their women's division to ha house a show where the women's division can't even be represented legally um, is frustrating, to say the least. Um, I think that uh, the WWE, um, I understand from like a uh, a purely corporate uh, capitalistic uh, viewpoint that you know here's an opportunity to make a cool two hundred million. I get it. I just, I'm still not comfortable with it though. Like on a, on a personal sort of moral level, it just doesn't feel good. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. 
I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna do um, we're gonna do that section of the show right now where I'm just sort of throwing the last uh, little bits and pieces of things against the wall. Last little last topics, you know, the last last pieces of interest that I want to discuss as we're coming towards the last last few minutes of the show. Um, congratulations to the Simpsons who have now surpassed Gunsmoke as the longest scripted television show uh, in history. The most episodes of a scripted television show uh, in history. They've surpassed Gunsmoke uh, this past weekend with their 636th episode. So, yeah, The Simpsons. Longest uh, longest ever television show um, in... Uh, in history, in terms of uh, in terms of being the longest running scripted television series ever, uh, so congratulations to The Simpsons. Uh, I mean, like, there's going to come a day where I'm going to watch all of these episodes that I've never seen before. Uh, it's like it's weird. Like it's kind of it's kind of scary because like it's like it's 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 going back to something that you love, of course, and you've got all this these nostalgic feelings for, um, but you just I don't know. You just don't you just don't know what to do uh, with yourself. Anyhow, uh, moving on. Is it just me, or is it one of those things where you you, you think that you've you've hit bottom with this president, and suddenly he does something even fucking stupider? Um, congratulations to Donald Trump for actually officially implicating himself as, as having an affair with Stormy Daniels, um, saying that uh, his lawyer Michael Cohen actually represented him, um, and so he knew about the payoff to keep Stormy Daniels quiet through an NDA. So it sort of implicitly admitting to the fact that he had an affair with Stormy Daniels. Good job. Good job, Donald. Like, I I don't understand how there isn't some kind of, like the guy just doesn't have a filter. Like it's, it's, it's intriguing. If nothing else, it's terrifying, but it's, it's, you, you think that you've hit bottom with this guy and then suddenly he, he is admitted implicitly to having an affair with a porn star, which like, I mean, Hey, whatever. If you're Donald Trump, you're probably pretty proud of that all said, and you're kind of a little bit annoyed that you haven't been able to say anything about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Also, I love the fact that his, uh, he, he's floated a softball by the Fox and friends hosts, um, what did you get your wife? And he said, I got her a very nice card. <laughs> like, it was like, he's on there. He's on the show on Melania's birthday. They ask him, what did you get your wife? He said, Oh, I might not say anything. I might get in trouble. So saying like, I didn't get my wife anything. I got her a very nice card. Oh, Donald, you're just, if, if you didn't have the nuclear launch codes, you'd just be an adorable old racist. We could all laugh at. Instead, you're an adorable old racist who could literally kill everyone. Ugh. And uh, finally, before we get into the uh, to the jangly banjo music here, I did want to uh, send my deep condolences to Australia and the uh, scientists there who have reported that the oldest known living spider has died at the age of 43. Rest in peace to number 16, female... Uh, trapdoor spider who was under observation in the wild since its birth in 1974 um outliving its nearest rival in terms of uh known living spiders by 15 years i didn't know spiders could live fucking 40 years that's crazy um so yeah a little offbeat news there and i think that is about time this show is produced by me with music from Mon Plaisir. You can check them out at loyaltyfreakmusic.com. Also art by Skylar Greencorn, who you can check out at artstation.com slash S Greencorn. You can follow me on social media at Jibberdy, J-I-B-E-R-D-Y, and follow the show on facebook.com slash the John Dulong Show. Make sure you email into the show at johndulongshow at gmail.com and answer this week's prompt. If I'm in your city, if I live in your city... What's the coffee shop that I should go to if I want to go get some work done? 
You can find the show in all the normal podcast places or by going to johndulong.com. And if you could, rate and review, as that helps to get more folks listening to the show. If you want to support the show, you can go to johndulong.com slash Patreon, where you can get a number of great rewards, starting at just $1. Of course, those rewards start this uh, week. We had a couple. Of, we have a couple of people who have uh, donated to the show, and uh, the rewards...